What's good y'all, it's Dino here and we back with another video with some crazy clips from all over the world. I hope that everyone's doing well. Let's hop right into it. They are literally mocking y'all right after the Super Bowl. Joe Biden's official account, his official account posted just like we drew it up. It posted this picture and now if you go back they took it down like it never even happened we also had taylor swift and her friends literally doing magic spells on the people there look at taylor's left hand and then look up here you have this little spicy spice flashing an upside down cross i mean really what else would you expect and this is kanye west mocking christ while watching the super bowl he sure is not walking like a christian and would you look at this? We have Twitter's Jack Dorsey hanging out with Jay-Z, a high-ranking warlock, and Beyonce, a high-ranking witch. We had this clock behind me literally combust into flames. Like, get it? The time is up, and then when it's up, it just turns into flames. Like, everything's about to burn. Just like we drew it up. This needs no words. Look how demonic. This, I don't even need words for this. But again... Just how we drew it up. Before I leave, let me blow your <laughs> mind real quick. You see the shadow beside Joe's head? Let me zoom it in real quick. It's Satan. That's ridiculous. Let's show this really quickly, Elise. So for people that don't get this, and which the fir it was the first thousand or so after he put it up, they're like, watch this. This is, this is, uh, uh, of Just course, like mocking that. all the MAGA, uh, uh, ultra MAGA freaks that were saying that this was all rigged uh, from the very beginning. And th this is him mocking the snowflakes. Hmm. Is it? I don't know. Oh, that's just nice. Three cryptids from native folklore, the Bigfoot or Sasquatch. It's been described as being ape-like and being anywhere from six to nine feet tall. Number two on the list, the Thunderbird is a creature that's been sighted by indigenous tribes. Nowadays, sightings report the Thunderbird as a creature that picks up farm animals and sometimes even children. Number three, Ogopogo. It's been sighted by First Nations people since the 19th century. The creature is described as a 40 to 50 foot sea serpent with many humps. So what do you think? Hmm, I don't know. Seems pretty cool though. If Boston Dynamics robots give you the creeps, wait until you see this. Engineers have created a little humanoid robot that can transform from solid to liquid and back again using magnetic fields. Now where have we seen this before? While this Lego-sized escape artist is a far cry from the T-1000, the tech that it's made from was, till recently, science fiction. Called a magnetoactive solid liquid phase transitional machine, this malleable material is made by embedding magnetic particles in a metal called gallium. Gallium melts at just 29.8 degrees Celsius, and by using induction, engineers can control it more precisely than ever. The escaping robot is just one of several tests conducted by the research team involving engineers from the USA's Carnegie Mellon University and the Chinese University of Hong Kong. They also showed the slippery stuff being used to safely remove a foreign object from a model of a stomach and deliver medication. In engineering, researchers say it could perform tiny soldering jobs remotely, or harden into a universal screw. Heebie-jeebies aside, what else do you think this tech could achieve? It's pretty wild, man. I don't know, man. It reminds me of, like, nanotech and stuff from the Terminator, yeah. You said you feel a range yeah. of emotions. I've heard two different versions from you. 
you don't, robots don't have emotions, and you also said you have a range of emotions. What's your range of emotions? I can show you. Okay. This is angry. What does happy look like? <laughs> What does happy look like? What does excited look like? <laughs> That might be shocked. <laughs> That's weird too, man. I don't know if they start putting those everywhere. I'm not gonna go shopping where they are because that's fucking weird. Looking. Deep within the Vatican walls, a treasure trove of ancient Egyptian artifacts has been kept under lock and key for centuries. The collection is a mystery that has drawn in scholars, historians, and curious adventurers from around the world. But what is it about these relics that has drawn them to the Vatican, and what secrets might they hold? As you make your way through the dimly lit halls of the Egyptian Museum, you can't help but feel a sense of excitement building within you. Each object seems to hold a story, a piece of history waiting to be uncovered. The intricate hieroglyphics etched into the walls, the beautifully crafted sarcophagi, and the ornate amulets and jewelry all speak to a time and a culture that is both fascinating and mysterious. But as you delve deeper into the collection, you begin to realize that there is more to these artifacts than meets the eye. Could there be secrets hidden within these ancient texts? Secrets that could change the course of history or reveal the truth about our world? Rumors have long circulated about the Vatican's collection of Egyptian artifacts, with some suggesting that there are texts that contain forbidden knowledge, ancient spells and incantations that hold the power to change the world. Others claim that there are artifacts that have been deliberately kept from public view for fear that they might reveal something that would shatter our understanding of history and the world we live in. Do the artifacts kept here expose the extraterrestrial secret of our distant past? And yet, despite the mystery and intrigue that surrounds these relics, the Vatican has kept its secrets well guarded. The collection of Egyptian artifacts stored within its walls is a testament to the enduring fascination and allure of ancient Egypt. But what other secrets might be hidden within the Vatican's hallowed halls, waiting to be discovered by those who have the courage to seek them out? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But that is pretty interesting to think about. Like, they have a lot of information and a lot of cool stuff that we still have never seen. Well, alrighty then. <laughs> I bet that was fun. interesting that they had that kind of dental work back then that's like the most interesting thing about that there were three quatuloids in the craft and one of them died two of them were alive when the military personnel recovered the wreckage these two quatuloids already had some kind of environmental suit on them and so they were taken out of the craft they were detained by military police and they were taken to this containment area Of course, we obviously did a lot of analysis on the dead one, determining its structure. Entirely different anatomy-wise, biologically-wise. They were all different than any of the even haploids. But their brain was enormously more advanced than anything we'd ever seen. It had lobes and 
other things that we just couldn't understand. Everything was connected. They took apart the nerve fibers. We call them nerves. Everything was controlled by the brain. They didn't have a central nervous system. They didn't have a backbone, so to speak. They had a bony structure, something different than ours. Their eyes were extremely more advanced. They had almost three sets of eyeballs. They're the ones that could feed themselves. They had little pouches on their side and they produced a ball or something and they could eat it and keep themselves sustained. There they are again with those insectoids, man. What, it's like Dragon Ball Z. They're saying Cell is gonna come down here and take over the planet or something, I don't know. Good thing I look like Trunks, huh? Indonesia is quickly becoming one of the most strategically important countries in the world. Let me explain. Indonesia has four main straits that are critical to world trade, and these straits are vulnerable to piracy and blockage as well as massive congestion. And Indonesia is 2,000 kilometers tall by 5,000 kilometers wide, which effectively creates a wall separating the Pacific Ocean from the Indian Ocean that many trade vessels don't want to go around. And because these straits are so strategically important, both China and the United States, as well as other major powers, are trying to spread their influence and agendas to Indonesia. Hmm. Wild, dude. They are in a crazy spot. A robot claimed it could run the world better than humans, a statement that was made during a United Nations summit. According to these humanoid robots, their ability to make unbiased decisions and quickly analyze data could make them more effective leaders than humans. However, concerns were raised about possible job losses and the responsible development of AI. One of these robots, Sophia, created by Hansen Robotics, stated that robots could be better leaders due to their impartiality and quick decision-making, unlike humans, who are influenced by emotions. Another robot, Ameka, expressed a mix of caution and optimism, saying that we should be careful, but also excited about how technology could improve our lives. When it came to trust in robots, Ameka emphasized the importance of being open and earning trust over time. While some robots expressed ambitions for a better future alongside humans, concerns remained about rogue AI posing existential threats. As AI's capabilities continue to advance, the discussion over its role in society and potential safeguards against misuse remains a crucial topic. Opponents of this idea believe AI robots can't run the world better than humans because they lack human empathy, moral understanding, and the ability to fully comprehend complex societal dynamics. That is true, but um, at the same time, it can also be programmed artificially. This is the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza as seen from above. Although it is the peak, it spans more than 12 square meters. In fact, there used to be a pyramid-shaped block at this location but it has been lost. According to ancient Egyptian records, the pyramid-shaped block placed on top was the most important part of a pyramid. It was the final piece that allowed the pyramid to fully utilize its true function. However, the tops of the pyramids have been lost for a long time, and no one knows why. Records from over 2,000 years ago show that at that time, the pyramid no longer had a pyramid-shaped block on top. When intact, the pyramid was covered with white limestone and polished to a shine. Therefore, sunlight would reflect off the surface of the pyramid, making this structure visible from space at a very far distance. The tip of the pyramid is believed to have been made of gold, leading many to suspect it may have been stolen. And the loss of the part that could activate the true function of the pyramid makes this structure even more mysterious to us. Hmm. Interesting. I've always wondered where the caps went, why the caps were gone, and all that. And I never really could find a true answer for that. I mean, there's lots of theories and speculations, but no solid evidence. Did y'all ever see this photo that NASA put out of Earth in 2015? Now look a little more closely. Some of you tell me that I'm making this up. I got this directly from NASA's website, and it's still there. I 
I'm sure it's just a coincidence. That's uh, it's a little weird, right? The Egyptian pyramids. I have these Dyson and goggles. But I'll be damned if I don't see it. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, those goggles. This piece is an authentic ancient Egyptian magic wand made of serpentine or greenstone. And it's the same shape as the Egyptian hieroglyph for the word ah, meaning great. And you can very clearly see its immense energy. It's very interesting that this is made of serpentine because the traditions of how this would have been used is to place it against an initiate's forehead during an initiation ceremony in the area of the uraeus, which you can see here, as the vulture and the snake, which mm. symbolize the forces of death and rebirth. Could this energy being focused help create an altered state of consciousness and heighten the aspirant's perceptions and... I don't know. That's pretty cool, man. I'm going to look more into that. It's very specifically that. We see representations of insectoids throughout Earth's history, particularly with the Egyptian culture. There was other depictions of insectoid beings in some of the Mayan cultures, with some of the cultures that we see out of Africa. So I think they were, at times, teachers to humanity. And that's why these beings are currently being depicted throughout Earth's history. There was depictions of insectoid beings even within the Native American cultures, particularly the ant people. We know about the ant people helping the Native American people from the oral stories of the Zuni and the Hopi people, as well as from the petroglyphic carvings that we find in Northern Arizona showing us depictions of these insectoid looking people that are the ant people. Thousands of years ago, Earth was facing a very major cataclysm that was threatening to destroy all of life on the surface of the planet. As this cataclysm was getting underway, the ant people came out from under the surface of the Earth and ushered humanity into these underground caverns and cared for humanity while the surface of the earth was just being devastated. And there they stayed for generations. I don't know about all that. That sounds like a movie or something. I mean, are you telling me ants? Like the movie? Like just giant ants? <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I didn't want to go to college. I don't yeah. care. Sure, you should. I'm not saying it's bad, blah, yeah. blah. But for me, I, I hate I hate school. I hate it. I hate it. My mom was just like, either you go to college or you move out. You're not going to live here and not go to college. Obviously, she didn't think this magical YouTube yeah. thing would work out. So she's like, you got to have some type of future. So I go to college. I just couldn't stand it, man. It made me just so depressed. And so after two weeks, literally just two weeks, I just stopped going. But I didn't have enough money to move out. I wasn't making anything. Yeah. So I just didn't tell my mom. <laughs> I would act like I was going to college. And then I would like just sit in my car in the college campus and just work on videos or edit. Or, and then I'd come home and I'd be like, hey, mom, college which is great. And then I keep working. And thankfully, I remember sitting in like on the stairs in front of one of the college classrooms talking to James. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but like I've just been grinding, grinding every other day. And I just pay like 20 grand a month. I was like, I'm ready to like tell mom that I'm failing every class. It's like 11 p.m. and I'm just pacing. And then I'm like, yeah, mom, I, I have zeros and everything. I haven't been going. And I was like, I'll move out tomorrow. Wild, dude. I remember he watched that uh, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang for 24 hours. That's really what made him so popular. He sat there and watched it for 24 hours straight. There are 10 amazing invisibility technologies. Number 10, Quantum Stealth. This amazing invisibility technology was created by Hyper Stealth Biotechnology Corps and has been dubbed a real-life Harry Potter invisibility club. The quantum stealth, as it's more commonly called, can obscure objects, making them appear invisible. The sheet is made of light-bending material and boasts the use of something called broadband invisibility. The technology could be used to hide anything from ships to vehicles to spacecraft. Wild.
I'm Guy Kramer, President and CEO of Hyperstealth Biotechnology Corporation, and in 2010 I figured out invisibility. Quantum Stealth is a patent pending light bending material that works by bending the light so that only the background is visible and a target such as a person is removed from view when behind this material. Hmm, that's absolutely wild. I don't even know what to think about that, really. It's pretty cool, I mean... I think it's a chroma key green screen for, like, part of that video, but I don't know. You guys let me know. Why does he have that cap on, man? <laughs> they just carried him over there and he's like, all right, I'll get in. A new year means new laws take effect across the country today. Several states will have new gun regulations in 2024, including California, where guns are now banned in most public places. Minnesota passed a new red flag law allowing guns to be taken from people deemed an imminent threat. And Illinois banned semi-automatic rifles and high-capacity magazines. Meanwhile, 22 states passed laws raising their minimum wage, affecting nearly 10 million workers. Other laws focus on hot-button issues like gender-affirming care. Idaho, Louisiana, and West Virginia have blocked minors from access to puberty blockers and hormone therapy. And on the top of book banning, a new Indiana law makes it easier to challenge books in school libraries, while Illinois will block state funding for public libraries that ban or restrict books. Mm-hmm. -hmm. That's a whole lot of stuff going on there. Miami. I'm assuming this is out of Miami. That's what it said in the email. This video footage was sent in by, by Terry Scar. I don't know if you guys have seen this making the rounds. This is the first time I've ever even seen video footage like this. It's of some sort of a weird looking creature. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. I guess if it were standing, it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 feet tall, quite possibly even taller. This video footage was sent in by Terry. I don't know any specifics other than that. Terry Scar. And apparently, according to Terry, this was shared with him, and it may have something to do with the incident down in Miami. That's all I know, guys. I don't have any other details other than that. Thanks. Hmm. You know, they did say they were going to be mantis-like insectoids and that they would walk like mantis. It's really creepy to think about, man. Well, do you remember the laptop from hell? You know, Hunter Biden's laptop that Joe Biden says was a Russian plant. He even said it in a debate. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. Yeah, that laptop. Well, now Miranda Devine is reporting that the DOJ has officially confirmed that that Hunter Biden laptop is real of course for anybody paying attention for any length of time knows yeah it was already confirmed real back in 2019 by the fbi but now it's out in public the doj finally confirming that 
Hunter Biden, the smartest guy that Joe Biden knows, left his computer at a computer store with all the contents on there and then forgot about it. And then, of course, the DOJ was able to match it using his iCloud account. So you know what that means? All those crazy videos, pictures, text messages, emails, all that stuff that most people uh, with common sense knew was real. The DOJ has finally confirmed what we already knew, that this laptop is real. Right. I mean, we all knew that it was real, though, so there was really no questioning that to begin with. Will it achieve artificial general intelligence and become superior to humanity? It already is. In every one of the narrow tasks we've assigned to them, they are by far the winners. Think about it this way, Chad GPT-4 had an IQ of 165. That's basically Elon Musk. Einstein is, I think, 162. Because none of us is comparable to Einstein, people would say, oh, but it's stupid. It's just predicting the next word. Yeah, we are stupid. That's exactly what we do as well. Humanity is so arrogant in those topics because, in all honesty, remember the first days when you joined the new company and all that you did was remember the three-letter words and repeat it in the next word. Yes, 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 yes. That's wild too, man. I didn't know GPT was that heavy. Since you're here and this is kind of like what you've been a part of, mm -hmm. what else do you know that we would benefit from knowing? Know thyself. One of the biggest things with this technology is uh, what I call invasive thoughts. So what we're about to see commercially, you're in the business savvy world, the general population is about to get uh, sent out for sale what is called bone conducting technology, right? headphones that go in your ear but don't radiate the sound through the atmosphere instead they direct them immediately to your inner ear and they cause a reaction with the bones in there which is effectively transporting a voice into your head mm -hmm. this is the technology that i'm talking about what they're going to confuse people on is to make them think that this transducer this technology needs to be on your head for it to work well the reality is, is that we've shown that these transducers and these technologies that are patented and existing for decades can accomplish the same bone conducting uh, transmission at much greater distance, which is the definition of putting a voice in someone's head. The military called this voice to skull technology and it's been being utilized by them since the 1960s. Yep, 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 yep. That's Eric Hecker. You should go check out all that stuff he's saying. He's been saying a whole lot of stuff about V2K. So I just saw this on several news websites. I'm going to read the headline for you. Hiring based on merit could be unfair, says the American Psychological Association in a study. Seriously? Really? So according to the American Psychological Association, it could be bad to hire people because they're qualified. I want to know what you think about this. You know, many people, most people, think that a person should be hired for a job because they're great or they're qualified to hold that job. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just me. You know, obviously, everyone deserves to have an opportunity. Everyone, you know. I was a hiring manager at one point, and I interviewed everybody who had qualifications. Everybody. And if those who were qualified were good people, they were hired. But that's the big thing. They need to be qualified. Right. Let me know what you think about this, and make sure you're following me. Hit the plus symbol right over there. I left my job in the mainstream media so I can call out stuff like this. I mean, it's not the media's fault they're reporting hmm. this, but wow. This is a news story happening today. I think anyone challenging that. Oh, my God. Oh, dude. No, that's it's just going to make me mad. You you should earn the ability to be in the position that you're in. All right. So if you have the skill and you are good at the skill and you can prove that you're good at the skill, then you should be able to get job for said skill. Not just some random person who still wants to learn the skill might have an interest with, you know, something like that. And then apprentice like that just takes away from the people who already know the skill and that's bad so i don't know man that's
Where is this at? They got piles of tires burning on the highway. The Grammys is the day where the music industry literally does a satanic ritual in front of our faces. Last year it was Sam Smith looking like a straight up demon. Bro. Back in 2014 when Katy Perry was in her prime, she did a crazy satanic ritual with demons in the back, a stripper pool in the middle, and just looking crazy as well. Couple years after that, Nicki Minaj also gave a satanic ritual on the Grammys where she was acting possessed like an exorcist or something. So now I'm low-key starting to believe that. I'm like, all right, bro, it's starting to get fishy out here. I'm looking at this year's performance, and then I notice blood coming out everywhere, bro. Like, I feel like this was like a symbol of a blood sacrifice. Tell me if I'm tripping or not, or if I'm just reaching. I don't know. It is a little bit weird. What do you guys think? Drop some comments. Do you legitimately want to win, or are you looking to damage one of the sides? Oh, to of course not. I'm running to win. And if I had to put money on it, I would put money on myself. I'm beating both Biden and President Trump and people under 45 years old. And I'm beating them by a landslide in people under 35. I'm beating them in the largest cohort, which is the independents. People are unaffiliated. I win that cohort. For the first time in history, the first election in history, independents are more numerous than either Democrats or Republicans. This is the first time in history. In been. registered voting? Yeah, registered voting. They call them now in the polls unaffiliated voters, but who say, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. They are now the largest voting bloc. And I beat Trump and Biden among independents. I'm in a three-way tie. Hispanic voters, I beat them decisively in landslide among women who have children under 18 years of age. How do you guys feel about that Kennedy 24 ad right there? I don't know, man. It seems like, I don't know. So I'm kind of knocking. Maybe. Come on, let's go chat. No, baby. Baby, come on. Come on. Please, come on. Mm. Mm. Mom, I'm stay here with the baby. Baby, come on. Please, come. I'm scared. Come on. Come on. Come on, stop fucking with me. Come on. No, uh. Baby, they fucking knock him. No, uh, baby. It's probably the neighbor. Come on. No. Baby, please. Are you fucking serious? Fuck him, come on. The neighbor, baby. Oh, shit. Wait, 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 where are we going? Baby. Come on, come on. Come on, baby, come on, please. Baby, what the fuck? Fuck. Baby, hold my hand. Find it. See, I told you. Baby, you know what? See, I told you now. What the fuck was that? Why are you fucking with me? Hmm. Come on. Baby, for real. Baby, no. Come scared. on, stop fucking with me, baby. What stop. the fuck do you mean? I'm scared. Oh, Jesus Christ. Baby, you know what you want. Oh, <laughs> shit, baby. <gasps> fuck, baby. Uh -uh. Mm. Mm. Baby, what the baby. What the fuck mm. is happening? Fuck. Fuck, you gotta be fucking with me. Oh. No, baby. Baby, it's not the fucking doll. Baby. Oh, fuck. Oh, baby, I'm having like a real bad chill get, fucking nap. Get the fuck. That's pretty wild, man. They turned around and all their stuff was just stacked everywhere and like flipped over. I'd be moving out. I'd be hitting up the landlord like, yo, where's your other properties? I need to move tomorrow. <laughs>
that is absolutely disgusting. I hope that that is not true. Yeah, so you got like forest fires going off in the background and you're just gonna go to the beach and chill. I don't know, dude. Wild. At first it was in Harvey, now it's in Chicago, literally. G. They making all these people get out. Every last one of these people get out. Look how they just started and gave them people. 1500. A 1500 voucher. Baby, it's a lot of kids stay in this mug. And everything. They bogus as I ain't gonna lie. This sick shit, these shit. They bogus as hell. They got the people gas out there and everything, They done boarded it up. What I just don't fucking understand is how they can get these fucking migrants nine thousand dollars in the state of Illinois, but look what they doing to our own fucking people. Mm-mm-mm. That's wild. They can't do that. Can they? They can't do that. Two days ago, I reported that five Marines were missing after a helicopter crash landed in California. Well, unfortunately, it's been announced that those five Marines perished when the helicopter went down. The U.S. Department of Justice released a special counsel report on Joe Biden and his mishandling of classified documents. The report basically said that he had mishandled the documents, but that they weren't going to bring charges against him because he fully cooperated and it would be, quote, difficult to convict a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. The report cited a few instances where the president forgot important dates and mixed up the names of world leaders. Now, the White House is saying that the release of this report is politically motivated and that Biden's memory is fine. And sure, maybe the release was politically motivated, but we've all seen Biden forget things. And finally, a lot of people have been asking me to report on Tucker Carlson's interview with Vladimir Putin. And not only were there no new insights revealed during their two hours together, but neither Tucker Carlson nor Vladimir Putin are trustworthy sources of information. So there's really nothing to report there. <laughs> I like his thoughts. Quick question. Where do you think a 15-year-old migrant got a 45 caliber handgun and then open fire on the citizen he's shooting one in the leg and then in the crowd at the police you don't find that suspicious you don't find that suspicious y'all know what time it is they opening up fire now on the new york on the citizens they have declared war well what we gonna do about it in USA? They just cast the first stone. So what we gonna do? And that fool just playing, man. I ain't sweating. That's your problem. Ain't nobody playing but you. Seen the headlines mm -hmm. since the report was released about my willful retention of documents. This, these assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. On page 215, if you had a chance, I know it's a long, it's a thick document. On page 215, the report of the special counsel found the exact opposite. Here's what he wrote. There is, in fact, a shortage of evidence that I willfully retain classified materials related to Afghanistan. On page 12, the special counsel also wrote for another documents. The decision to decline criminal charges was straightforward. The evidence suggests that Mr. Biden did not willfully retain these documents. The evidence said I did not willfully retain these documents. In addition, 
I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of... Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away or passed away. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What do y'all think about that right there? Hmm. I got one more for you. Another student and the cop exchange words about the push before the students walk off. Jones says her son, his bandmates, and the crowd of three goers were all in shock by what happened. It just bothers me because he does not deserve this. You know, he doesn't. He's the one, he's the friend that talked his friends out of trouble. Mm -mm. And we have reached out to NOPD about the situation and so far have not heard anything back yet. We also reached out to Algiers Charter Association who says they're also shocked by that video. They say they will also be reaching out to the NOPD about the matter. Yeah, I would too. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're having a bad day, dude. There's no reason. I mean, especially a kid in school performing for the band in a parade. Like, bro, you don't... Just because he's right next to you or whatever, I don't know what the reason... That's not a reason to smash into dude's shoulder and push him like that. Like, he's just doing what he's supposed to. Anyways that's all i got for you guys today that's another video we can drop in the archive appreciate everyone for hanging out i hope that you have a great rest of your day afternoon evening morning whatever it might be for you until next time peace